Welcome back, everyone. In this last video, I'm going to give a very brief overview to central tendency. And then when we come back to class, we're going to talk about it some more. I'm going to try to do this video really fast because my husband just went to the store and I don't want him to stop us again. Anyway, so here we go. Central tendency measures. Central tendency is um, a representative measure. In other words, it tells where most of the scores cluster the most likely score in a distribution. There's a couple different ways of showing central tendency. And the one that you are most familiar with is the average, or what we call in statistics, the mean. And it's represented um, often with a capital M. And here is the formula for the mean. And we talked about this sigma summation sign before. So basically to find the mean, what we're going to do is we're going to sum up all the scores in a set and divide that number by the total number of scores. So you know how to find an average. You're adding up all the data values and dividing it by the sample size. That gives us the mean. That's the average score. We also have another way of representing central tendency, and that's the median. That's the midpoint of the data range. Think of that as the geographic middle. It's the line that is exactly in the middle of all of the data values. If you line up all the data values from small to large and you pick out that middle value, that's going to be your median. And perhaps the best way to think about that is when you're driving on a, a roadway, there's a median in the middle. It's just dead center, right? And you have equal numbers of lanes on each side, usually. So that's the median. And the final way that we might show central tendency is the mode. And this is the most frequent score in a distribution, the value with the highest frequency. And it's the data value that occurs most frequently in the data set. So that's another way that we might show central tendency. It's less used. The mean is the most common use, um, measure of central tendency. But sometimes we have situations where we really need the median, and we're going to talk about that. So here's a simple data set, um, three, eight, four, seven, six, whatever. I'm not going to read them all. And there are a total number of eight in the data set. So to find the average, we simply add up all the numbers and divide by eight to get 5.75. Makes sense, right? Median, as I talked about, being the midpoint of the data range, we have to line all the numbers up in order from smallest to largest, and then we either find the very middle number, or in the case of an even number, we have to average the two middle values. So there are eight numbers here. That's an even number. So we have to look at the two middle values, six and seven, add them together and find the average. So our median in this case would be 6.5. And finally, the mode, the number that is has the highest frequency in this particular data set would be eight. And that doesn't really tell us a whole lot in this particular data set, so you can see why sometimes the mode is not really all that meaningful. So I'm gonna take you back to the salary data set that we talked about in the first video, and there's a real reason why I introduced it back then. And this is to show you when the median is actually the best measure of central tendency. Now, what kind of shape is this again? It's positively skewed. When you have skewed data, the median might be the better measure of central tendency. So as we look at this whole thing, we've got a couple different modes. So we're just going to not even think about mode as being a good measure of central tendency in this case. But if we calculate the median salary going from 15,000 to 110,000 or whatever, the median in this data set, set, the geographic middle, the point at which half of the scores are above and half of the scores are below, is 28.58. The mean, however, is 34.23. So what's happening is we have some very extreme scores that are impacting the mean. When we have extreme scores, the mean starts to become not the best measure of central tendency. These extreme scores are pulling the mean. And so when we have skewed data, we're going to use the median 
as our best measure of central tendency. Does that make sense? So let's take a look at what happens in skewness. When we have skewed data like we just had there, we have less skewed data here, um, negative skewness, and the mode is always going to be at the peak. The mean in skewed data is always going to be closest to the tail, and the median is somewhere in the middle. So think of it this way. These extreme scores are pulling the mean. They're pulling the mean away from what is really the central tendency of this data. So the mean gets pulled by the long tail. So the mean is not always the best representative number for a whole data set. When we have skewed distributions, the median is a better measure of central tendency. So just to, to determine if it's a left skew or a right skew, just go with the long tail. When the long tail on the left, it's left skewed. Long tail is on the right, it's right skewed. And left skewed is a negative skew and a right skew is a positive skew. I hope that makes sense. Oh, that was my last slide. I did that so fast, I bet you're happy. Okay. The last thing I'm going to have you do is in this um, page that you're on looking at these videos is a link to complete a quick little activity to give me some feedback on what it is that you are maybe still struggling with in this course. What concepts are you finding to be just sort of difficult? I need to know this because I want to be able to hear, I want to be here to help. Like I mentioned before, statistics is just a matter of trial and error, and sometimes it's messy, but we get to the answers at the end. So I hope that you had a great telecommuting day, and I'll see you in our next class.